My entitled boss forces me to work 4th of July, so I throw an epic party with the company card. So this starts on Monday the 13th, as I receive an email from a VP that is not over my department. For this story, we'll call them Bad VP. I am told that my team will be required on the 4th. I politely tell them no, that our team has been scheduled this day off and people already have plans. My team is the IT team and as many of you know, IT teams usually get shafted by companies. So over the course of the week, I let my team know what is happening. I let them know that I have been reaching out to higher ups to get it fixed. I also tell them that if their plans are ruined, I will make it right somehow. Over the course of three meetings, it starts to look like things are not going my way. In response, I send an email to the CEO of the company. All of my higher ups know I'm going to do this and said I should do this as he is very family oriented and that he would not allow anyone to work on a national holiday. Well, he is on vacation in the Bahamas until the 6th, but his assistant informed me that he would look into this after he gets back. This makes me repeatedly slam my head into the desk. So I tell everyone that they will be working from home and that I will be setting up my cell phone as priority for in-call routing, meaning that I will get most of the calls. To be honest, I was expecting almost zero calls, especially since I was asked to send out a notification that IT support would cover the 4th of July. I never sent out that email. A day later, I was given another outrage. I was told in my email that my employees would be required to be at the office and no one was allowed to work from home. They would be checking the door badges ins to verify when when we were at the office. I asked why in an email and they said that they wanted to make sure that no one was playing video games at work. We normally work from home about two thirds of the week and video game playing is a normal occurrence at work. So I walk into this person's office. After a very long conversation where she was losing the logic war with me, she told me that, it's just IT, it's not like you guys have lives. I'm not kidding you, that is exactly what she told me. I reported this to the VP who said, I will take care of this. It likely won't be done until after the 4th, so get creative. I know this man well. We have worked together for a long time and get creative is code for corporate shenanigans. I asked the person requiring us to be at the office if they cared if we had an office party. They said no, as long as it did not interfere with the call flow. Even suggested using my new company card to pay for it. Go wild. Pro tip, never tell me to go wild. At this point, it was Tuesday the 21st. I let everyone know what's up, but that I have something planned. I asked who had things planned for that day. Two people had told me they were planning to shoot off fireworks with their family, but the rest were planning barbecues with their friends. I write up an email to the VP over my department and the bad VP. I tell them that I let everyone know. We were all expecting to work until 8 p.m. on Monday. Per the conversation with bad VP, I will be having an office party as sort of a sorry to the guys and gals who got shafted by this decision. The bad VP replied again, thank you for your understanding. Also, yes, I would expect an office party if I had to work on the 4th of July as well. So go wild and enjoy your time. Use your new company card if you need to cover a few expenses. Also, I should not have to remind you or anyone else, no fireworks or drinking on company property. So now it's time to tell you about my office. You see, a while back, the IT team was moved from the main corporate office into a smaller building by itself. It has a nice gaming break room, a decent sized gym, and a full on drink bar. Soft drinks, mind you, not alcoholic drinks. Check, okay, out back is a big patio that, okay. Out back is a big patio that crosses country lines as soon as you cross the small creek. A creek that just so happens to have a footbridge over it leading to an empty field. So I start making some phone calls. On Monday, June 25th, I call up everyone into an hour early meeting that morning. I explain to all of them that I will make it right. I ask everyone to invite their friends and family to the office. No supplies will need to be brought by anyone. I tell them all this and I do mention that it's gonna be non-alcoholic, but I will have something planned for everyone else. I told them to expect food all to be provided and that they don't need to bring anything unless they wanna bring some fireworks. Basically, they won't have to spend a dime. The fourth comes and that entire day we did absolutely no work. No tickets, no calls came in. Well, seven calls did come in, but it was from the same person, the bad VP. She was calling to make sure we were manning the phones. All of us were playing video games and watching movies. 6 p.m. rolls around and everyone was told that the food was ready. People were expecting hot dogs, hamburgers, maybe a bratwurst or two. What they got was a full on barbecue feast with pizza and other foods. There was smoked brisket, spare ribs, smoked sausage, smoked turkey, both kinds of tater salad, coleslaw, green beans with bacon and onions, potatoes, agrante, 
pizza from two different places, excellent hamburgers, and bratwurst hot dogs. On the dessert side was cake, very good cookies, four different kinds of pie, and about two pounds of fudge. Families and friends started showing up around 6, 6.15. Some did bring alcohol, but I told them that they needed to leave that in their cars. I wasn't that crazy. Some were not too happy about that, but agreed as it was a free dinner for random strangers. So let me set the scene for you. I am out there with all the calls rooted to my cell phone and everyone is just having a good time. We have a ton of people there just enjoying a fun night, chatting about random stuff, eating the food, and occasionally lighting off some sparklers or throwing a firework into the stream. My VP, not the bad VP mind you, shows up with his family and brought some water balloons for the kids and the man children. Around 8.30 it's starting to get dark and people want to shoot off more than simple sparklers and fireworks that we were using. The VP over the IT department had everyone cross the footbridge over the county line and off company property mind you and we set up a big wooden board using it as our launch pad. We fired off what we had for about an hour or two, and some of us just hung out for a while. At around this time, people were getting tired and ready to head home. I told people to take home the leftovers within reason. We were all clocked out around 8, but no one left until about 10.30. The bad VP did call once more while we were out back at the party. It was around 7.50, and she called asking for a status update. My exact words were, well, you were the only one to call us all day. The rest of us were out back on the patio enjoying the 4th of July shindig. She simply acted like my boss and said, as long as no alcohol or fireworks are on company property, I don't care. We ate roughly half of the food catered. The rest was taken home. A small group volunteered to stay behind and clean up, including my VP. We had a funny conversation about how this will make waves with the bosses, but he said that he had my back and asked me how much this cost. I gave him a sideways look, which made him laugh. Tuesday morning, I submitted my expense report to my VP. This email would evidently make its way to the bad VP and up the chain to the CIO of the company. It would be a bad idea to give you the exact cost of the party, mind you, but I can tell you that because of this 4th of July party, new rules were put into place. Any expenses over $4,000 or more must be approved by a direct supervisor, VP over that department, and a full expense report must be sent to the financial department for review after the fact. Hint, this party cost over $6,000. The barbecue was the most expensive part. I did not order from a low to mid tier place. The place I ordered from has consistently been on the top 10 in the DFW listing for the last 30 years. I ate at this place so much I was friends with the owner. The best barbecue I've ever had. The pies and cakes were custom made by a bakery and the cookies were made by a small boutique cookie place. I had 10 12 packs of Coke, Coke Zero, Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper Zero, Pepsi, and Pepsi Zero. I bought five pepperoni, five sausage, five cheese, two Hawaiian, and three cheeseburger pizzas from one place, and nearly the same number from another place. Excluding the cheeseburger ones, I subbed out those for a specialty pizza from the other place. The burgers were from an excellent burger place that did catering. I know the owner well. He brought his kids for the night of fun after he heard what was happening. He was also the one who brought the brat dogs as he recently added those to his menu. This was the most expensive office party in the history of the company. The only thing more expensive than this were some business meetings that the CEO rented private rooms in high-end restaurants for. As for the CEO, he was outraged. Not at the cost of the party, mind you. He knew that the party would not be necessary if people had been allowed to work from home. He was outraged that IT was the only group required to work on that day. When I submitted the logs showing how we received no phone calls, no service requests, and that we basically watched movies and played video games during our shift, he had heard enough. He apparently sent out a scathing email about work-life balance and the importance of our holidays to every upper management. It was kind of funny as people wanted me to get in trouble for what I I did, but the reality is other departments have done similar things in the past, just not on the scale of what IT did. The bad VP was admonished quite effectively and sent me an apology email. I forwarded it to the team with a strong hint to not reply. Then my VP let the CIO and the CEO know about what the bad VP said. That whole comment about you guys don't have any lives. The bad VP did actually confirm she said this in a meeting to her executive vice president. It did not go over well. I have never heard people yelling in the office meeting like that before. The CEO of the company came to our office and yelled at her. 
Not sure if she was fired, but she is not at work today. In the active directory, she does not have the down arrow of death. So I'm not 100% sure what happened to her. I know she has lost whatever clout she had at this company with her attitude. Strangely, there is now no longer any pushback for my bid to get anyone to work from home. But let me know. Am I the jerk? This story was epic. Not only did this leader go above and beyond supporting his team, he brought about some serious change at his work. I wish I could say that you guys don't have lives was shocking to hear from upper management, but this story just makes it seem like someone had it out for the IT team. I know the pain of having to work on every major holiday, My old job ran 24-7, so it was inevitable that we would work on these days. But much like the OP, we demanded a party as payment. It was never as awesome as this OP's party, but it got us through the shift. My manager tells me that I need to attend the corporate meetings and forget about my job. This decision ends up pissing off the sales team. So this happened several years ago when I used to work for a national used car dealer. I worked with their inventory department at the time. One of our responsibilities was customer preps. A prep was when a customer was buying a car and in the process of signing the paperwork, we would grab that car from the sales lot, gas it up, clean it, and then park it in the drive aisle for when the customer would come out, they would see their car ready to go for them after finishing the paperwork. Typically, this was a straightforward task. Whoever had a free hand can grab a prep. We all carried radios to communicate with each other and the sales manager had radios as well to notify us when there was a prep or other customer service issues that we were responsible for helping out with. When a sales manager called back for a prep, we acknowledged them to let them know that we had them and someone would be on it. To set the scene for this instance of malicious compliance, I have to briefly describe the situation. Our department, along with detailers and technicians, were having one of those quarterly meetings. Now, these meetings were totally void of any useful information. They consist of 15 minute videos from some corporate bigwigs bragging about how great business is. Then another 30 minutes or more of managers in store, or sometimes with district managers, crowing about how great we were doing and to keep it up. They did provide free sub sandwiches for everyone and this was all done on the clock. I personally found these meetings to be overly pretentious and obnoxious, so I would always skip out on them and continued working, most of the times on my own. I know, shocking, no one else wanted to give up free food and a paid break just to keep working? Eventually, one particular manager was not happy that I always skipped out on these meetings. He told me I had to attend and could not leave until it was over. I asked, what about the preps? He said, don't worry about the preps. We'll deal with any of them after the meeting. Well, okay then, I've been told what I need to do, so I'll do it. I came into the break room at the start of the meeting, got my sandwich, propped up my feet, and turned off my radio. One of my coworkers sat beside me and his radio was on, but had turned the volume really low. During our meeting, sales apparently had a good streak of selling cars. Every few minutes, my coworker told me that there was some preps. As time passed, more preps were called back and there was no one responding to sales managers calling for them. My coworker asked me what I was going to do. I said, I'm going to finish my sandwich and sit here. I have my orders. One of the sales managers was beginning to get pretty irate. We could tell by his tone over the radio. About 30 minutes into the meeting, that sales manager poked his head in the door and said that there were several preps waiting and asked if someone could go get them. The manager that made me come to the meeting picked a couple of guys to leave the meeting early to get the preps. He knew that I would have left a long time ago to take care of these preps, but this was his way of punishing me. He wanted to make sure I was taking a paid break and listening to a group of jabronis during these past meetings. By this time, there were six or seven preps waiting and a drive aisle full of customers and salespeople waiting on these cars to be brought around. Some were waiting close to an hour before they were able to get their car. Later that night, I was passing through the showroom and the manager that was getting irate from earlier stopped me and asked what was going on. We had a good working relationship relationship and I was kind of his go-to person when it came to serious customer service issues. So he valued my word. I told him everything that was said to me about not working during the meeting and how they wouldn't worry about preps during that meeting as well. Of course, that didn't go over too well and there was a big meeting the next day between sales management and operations management. Following that meeting, it was decided that during any future meetings, a specific person or persons from my department would be designated to listen for and grab any preps that were called back for. I was never chosen for that role. I just had to sit back, eat my sandwich while I still got paid. They really taught me a lesson. But let me know, am I the jerk?
I don't think I've ever said this on the Jerk channel, but corporate meetings are the worst. They are so boring, and it's pretty dumb when they say that they're mandatory. Attendance got so bad at my old company that they started saying that if you skip the meetings, it would lead to a write-up for every three missed meetings. But they did try to do giveaways at the end of these meetings so everyone wouldn't hate management. Personally, I still skipped a lot of these meetings because I used the excuse that I needed to prep for the shift since I was the lead. The only fun meetings were the yearly fire safety meetings because that's where we got to play with fire extinguishers and fire hoses. That stuff was pretty cool. Coworker says my band can't perform a Radiohead song because of his religious beliefs, so we decide to maliciously comply. Our institution of about 2,000 staff had a yearly dinner and dance event. This was pre-COVID, of course. This was an educational institution where most of us are either teachers or administrators. I am part of the small group of teachers and staff in this institution that have formed our own staff rock band. We are usually given a 30 minutes performance slot at the previous dinners and dances. Thus, we are invited to perform again for the upcoming one. The theme of that year was superheroes. Our merry little band set out a full set list of songs, which included the songs Holding For Our Hero by Bonnie Taylor, the Shrek soundtrack version. We threw in Creep by Radiohead because we wanted to do a song to slow the pace down midway through our set. All of us in the band are music lovers covering multiple genres, and also coming from many different faiths and religions. None of us even considered that Creep was an inappropriate song for the stage. So now let me introduce the antagonist of this story. We will call him Ash. He was the main staff coordinator for the entire dinner and dance event, a role that was bestowed on up and coming staff who show potential for leadership positions. Ash and his committee were the ones who came up with the superhero theme and would oversee everything for the event, including our 30 minute performance. Before this event, none of us in the staff band knew Ash well. He was a bit of a loner and we would soon discover also takes his religion and values seriously. So serious that he had no qualms claiming jurisdiction over the whole event with his values as constitution. We had given the event committee our song set list two months before the event, after which we had began rehearsing in earnest. No committee member said anything in those two months about any songs they wanted removed. At our last rehearsal before the event, Ash decided to drop in on our rehearsal. Midway through our set, we began to play Creep. He suddenly raised his hand to object and said, stop, stop, stop. I'm removing this song from the set list. You can't play this song. We were stunned. This was two days before the show and we had sunk in tens of hours rehearsal by this point. Why, we asked. I've read the lyrics of this song. The spirit of the song is offensive. It has the wrong values for an educational institution such as ours. We protested. Some of our band members are very religious themselves and they saw no problem with the song, but he would not budge an inch. You are not playing creep on stage. I am going to escalate this to the deputy principal. The band members were fuming at this point, regardless of religion, but the band leader made the call. Okay, okay, we can't play this song on stage, right? Then we won't. And just to be sure, this is a superhero themed event, right? And your committee is encouraging all attendees to come dressed as superheroes, am I correct? Yes, Ash replied, and especially so for performers. So we are expecting your band to come dressed as superheroes to fit our theme. Cue malicious compliance. The day of the dinner and dance comes around and over a thousand colleagues showed up. Some dressed in superhero t-shirts, some as Wonder Woman, and even one in a full Deadpool costume. But none of them grabbed as much attention as a very tall, very leggy, very conspicuous Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon had on a tight fit sailor uniform, slim waist and gorgeous bosom, extremely short skirt and the wig. It was none other than the band leader, who by the way is a 40 year old male wearing a padded bra. Ash was livid, but as Sailor Moon was grabbing so much attention with so many folks clamoring to have photos taken with her, Ash did not want to spoil his own party by telling her to take it off. At one point, even the deputy principal grabbed a photo with Sailor Moon. The 30 minute performance was decent, mistakes here and there, but none of us were professionals and the crowd enjoyed it anyways. Sailor Moon, who was the bassist, was head banging and swinging her wig wildly to the finale, holding for our hero, ensuring that everyone had their eyes on her. Naturally, there would be a best dress segment and it was clear from the start that Sailor Moon was going to be nominated and then destroy the competition. But Sailor Moon did something that none of us expected. As as the MC for the event asked her why she chose to come as Sailor Moon and the entire event hall was riveted on her, curious to hear her answer, she did not answer but instead started singing the lyrics to Creep. The crowd cheered and applauded, but no other table at the event was as overjoyed as the staff band table. 
who understood the deeper meaning behind what the band leader just did. It's been a few years since that event, and we aren't sure if Ash got that promotion he was seeking. He was such a loner that nobody really saw much of him, thus nobody talked to him either. The band leader, on the other hand, has become a legend. He was once at a meeting where the folks across from him said that he looked familiar, like they had seen him somewhere before. Then someone suddenly burst out, You're Sailor Moon! You're the Sailor Moon! They didn't even know his name. But let me know, what would you have done in this situation? You gotta love this type of malicious compliance. It doesn't hurt anyone, but it still brings a little justice to an annoying situation. I'm all for people wanting to be themselves religiously or spiritually, but your beliefs should never get in the way of others. Also, I think Mr. Ash here was totally in the wrong for not allowing a song to be played. But without Ash being a butthead, the legend of Sailor Moon guy probably would have never been born. So, you gotta look at it from the bright side. That's it for today's video. If you wanna make sure you don't miss out on any content, hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell to turn on notifications. If you wanna finish listening to all those stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you're someone who live streams and needs copyright free music, check out the Cream of the Crop music by searching Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you choose. Remember, it's free.